This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. In this episode, I want to have a look at the gym Solid Q. Solid Q is a background worker for Active Job, and instead of using something like Redis, which Psychic uses, and Rescue also uses Redis. It uses the database for the backend queuing. And this is something very similar to what Good Job is doing and also Delayed Job. And one nice thing about SolidQ is that it is database agnostic for the most part. You can use MySQL, PostgreSQL, or SQLite. And if you're unfamiliar what Active Job is or Background Workers, think of it like when a user wants to sign up for your service. They need to enter in their email address and password. This will send an email to the user so that they can confirm their email address and their account. However, sending that email could take a bit of time. Depending on how the email is rendered or any network congestion, it could take a few seconds. So the amount of time that the email would take to deliver, the end user doesn't need to wait around for that kind of response. Instead, we could just let the user know that an email will arrive shortly, and the actual responsibility for sending the email will go into a background job. So even though the user has gotten the confirmation on the website that their account is now signed up and that they need to verify their account through an email, the actual delivery and sending of that email happens in a background job. And so background jobs are very important in our web applications because there's a lot of different kinds of calculations that go on that we don't need to hold up the end user on. And so in this episode, we're gonna look at adding in Solid Q into our Rails application and really just some of the suggestions around it. And currently, Solid Q doesn't have an interface for us to really see what's going on, but there are a few gems available and we're going to explore which one I like the most as well. And just as a disclaimer, I don't know if I would really trust Solid Q right now in a production environment. I think that it's something where in a few months or later this year, it could be something very powerful. But there's a few features that I think would be needed right off the bat before I start using them. And that's mainly around recurring jobs. There's many times where there's either some kind of cleanup work that I want to do on a recurring basis or something similar that I want to have queued up on an interval. I don't like using gems like whenever simply because they do add a bit of overhead because they have to start up the entire Rails application to then queue up a job. And if this happens too frequently, you could start running into memory and CPU pressure, and it could cause some anomalies. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the Pro Membership.